Now, Steve, when you're watching that meeting in Geneva between the two leaders, do you think there's going to be any kind of personal chemistry at all? I don't believe so, no. I mean, Gorbachev and Reagan, now they had personal chemistry. Bill Clinton and Boris Yeltsin, personal chemistry. Biden and Putin? I don't think so. No personal chemistry. Joe Biden is the fifth US president who Vladimir Putin will have dealt with. And they've all had their different ways of, of dealing with Vladimir Putin. We saw uh, George W. Bush uh, inviting uh, Putin to a barbecue. We've seen Donald Trump lavishing praise on uh, Vladimir Putin. We've seen a tougher attitude from Barack Obama. But steadily, the US-Russian relationship has kept getting worse despite these different approaches. On a scale of one to 10, what would you give it? I think I'd give it a minus two, because you know one senior Russian <laughs> official said recently that uh, in many ways, the relationship between East and West right now is worse uh, than during the Cold War. And that's saying something. What about you? How would you score it? You know, if it was positive, I'd give it a plus one. But since you've gone into minus territory, I'll be at minus one, too. I mean, it's pretty extraordinary, isn't it? Senior U.S. officials are saying that they regard Vladimir Putin as having the superpower of disruption. We will not hesitate to raise the cost on Russia. President Biden is saying he's going to tell President Putin what it is that he wants him to know, which is that the US is displeased with Russia on any number of fronts. So, Steve, let's talk about the friction between the two countries. First of all, I mean, it's important to say that this friction didn't appear overnight, right? It's built up these frustrations and this mistrust between the two sides. On the one hand, you have Russia, which is frustrated with America. It believes that America uh, is basically doing its own thing, doing what it wants on, on the world stage, pulling out of international uh, agreements. It points to the Iraq war. But on the other hand, you have America, which is angry at, at Russia, basically adopting the role of bad boy of Europe, doing all kinds of things from cyber attacks against America, meddling in, in the US elections. Uh, there is concern about um, possible Russian aggression. President Putin basically cracking down on Russian democracy, the jailing of Alexei Navalny, all these things you put into the pot. It's going to be a difficult conversation, I think. Diplomacy is back. Well, let's try and talk about what a successful summit might look like. What do you think, Steve? You know, if Vladimir Putin was sitting here and you asked him that, I think he'd probably say, well, it's already been a successful summit. Even before Putin arrives in Geneva, he's already got what he wants. He's got the summit, the big meeting that he's been looking for. You know, in Geneva, he'll be center stage in the geopolitical spotlight. That's what he wants. He wants Russia to be seen as a superpower, a great power, uh, the equal of America. What about Joe Biden? Laura, what, what does he want uh, from this summit? You're exactly right. President Biden has been criticised for granting President Putin this privilege of a summit with the US leader without actually getting anything specific in return beforehand. And as one US official said, if you're waiting for deliverables from this meeting, you'll be waiting for a long time. He's cast this whole first foreign trip of his presidency as a battle for the forces of democracy against those of autocracy. Uh, so here you have President Biden about to go toe to toe with Vladimir Putin, the man who represents autocracy, at least in the eyes of President Biden.